Good morning, everybody. Hey, uh, I did get a copyright strike on one of my videos because I had my radio playing. There was a CD in and uh, from uh, Nightwish, and it was just playing in the background. You can hardly even hear it, but the uh, program at YouTube picked it up, heard enough of it, and I got a copyright strike. I thought it was interesting. said this uh, music may be owned by this parent company, nobody I'd ever heard of, but uh, I just thought, geez, you can't even have music on in the background. They want a piece of it. Interesting. All right, so today, there's the Ibanez with that cab, and uh, because I'm an idiot, I goofed again. The cab's white. The Ibanez in my room looked whiter than it is, but it still looks nice together, but I should have went with a cream Tolex on that cab, but it's still pretty sick. Uh, we're, today, we are going to bias this. We're going to put a new pair of 6v6s in it just to make sure that uh, they are up to everything they can be. So we'll pull it out, show you how to bias it. We'll have it hooked up to that for a load. It'll be awesome. Stay tuned. Always good to have a power driver on hand. First, we're going to take these out. Makes things go so much faster. Take the back off and then get the back off. We will take these top ones out and that will release the head from inside, the amplifier part. This one didn't want to come out. I may have to put a screwdriver behind it to get some leverage. There it goes. manhandle this too much. There we go. Keep a hand on this so it doesn't fall. You could also hang it, or put it on its side, and then it's sitting. But if you're a burly guy like me, you shouldn't have any problem. Holding it in with your hand while you take these out. All right, that ought to be it. Make sure you're not tearing something. Find a balance point between the transformers. And here we go. Because there's nothing on this side, I feel pretty safe rolling it over there until I find a good way for us to support this from the top so that uh, I don't break a tube. I've done that before. I don't want to do that, but I'll find a safe way to support this and we'll take the camera around inside. Here we go. I've got some ruby tubes. They're all rubies. Uh, 6v6. The uh, power tube sockets are mounted to the chassis, which is awfully nice. These are just mounted to the PC board, which is fine. It's not too big a deal. Uh, it's just not as sturdy, but the sockets are on a smaller side. Anyway, we're going to put some contact cleaner in there and then put these back in. You'll go with the orbiting type motion. And just down till it's all seated. Make sure your pins line up and then give it a little kind of spin. Orbit, orbiting fashion. And then these retainers go in to prevent undue vibration, harmonics, things like that. Now, we'll put our contact cleaner in there. Well, I'm gonna wait till I have it too. So these are a matched pair of JJ's, very nice. Some people will say, don't ever touch the tube with your finger, but it's um, it doesn't get that hot to make the kind of difference that they're talking about. The uh, And again, just a nice firm rotating kind of orbital spin there. The uh, kind of tube they're talking about is a high, wattage lamp bulb that you might have in an overhead projector or a home theater projector, those kind of things. 
where those little bulbs get really hot. And if you get some oil on them, it can create a hot spot and um, wear out your bulb faster. However, if that bothers you or concerns you, you're welcome to give these a wipe. If you want to wipe them down with a Windex even or some sort of cleaner, you can if it makes you feel better, but not necessary. All right. Cool. So now we'll flip this over and we'll take a look on the inside. I'm going to use the box here as a rest. Again, making sure I don't put any pressure on my tubes. I've done that before and broken them, which is not good. Left me very chagrined. Chagrined. So we got it up just like that. Lots of times you can use the, the box as a chassis rest. All right, so here's the inside of this TSA. Um, over here we have the input. Of course, you plug it in right back here. And then these go around to the switch. Some go out to the power transformer and then come back in so that you have power supply to the tubes and to the DC part. Your input power supply is right here with those four little diodes that makes your rectifying bridge for clean DC through these filter caps should give you a nice bus of clean DC. It looks like we have another uh, rectifier bridge right there. And this is probably a voltage um, regulator for a positive rail of plus 12, maybe 12 and a half, maybe 15. I'm not sure without checking it out, but that's probably what it is. A lot of fuses in here, so if your amp goes kaput, definitely take it apart and check these fuses. We got some fast blow, that's a slow blow, but here are some fast blow ones meant to snap in an instant should there be a problem. Two more up here, another one over there. So lots of protection in here, but you know, it's so funny, oftentimes an amp blows and the fuses are still all fine. The uh, board right down here is our tube screamer. This is the tone board with treble, volume, and bass. Treble, bass, and volume. And um, here is our test points. PR3, it looks like, PR2, and PR1. So instead of firing this up and working a probe and a screwdriver, I'm gonna hook test clips to those so that my, uh, I don't have to begin here with probes. Anytime you can do that, you're better off. Have some test wires, leads attached to those. Um, it's not gonna matter too much which one goes where. I'm still not plugged in, but these are insulated. You got a little insulative boot right around the clip. So I'll put one in there, one like that. And then I'll put this other one down here like this, and we're probably biasing each tube, so there's a bias for one. Actually, with just one test pot, or with one adjustment pot, we're looking for probably a match between those, or it could be a positive and a ground test lead. So I'll hook the meter to both of them first and see what goes on, and uh, be back with my meter hooked up. Probably because there's just one test pot, that's our plus and negative um, connection instead of having to ground to the chassis. That's probably going to be just hooking uh, your meter up to those. And I think we're looking at 30 millivolts uh, or negative 30 millivolts. It doesn't matter if you get 30 because you could have your leads backwards. But whatever you measure, 30 millivolts is what we're shooting for, I believe. I'll double check that and be right back. Oh, here's the effects loop right up there and we only had two 12x7s and I believe that's because the uh, so we have two gain tubes and then this effects loop just comes back into the PCB circuitry down in here so I don't think it's a tube driven effects loop it does work fine works without a problem but there is additional clarity in tube driven effects loops they're just for some reason a little nicer 
All right, be right back. All right, verified that it's negative 30 volts DC. So I got chassis ground right there. Um, you can also ground to that other pin. The test point is PR1. So you could have a clip on PR2. And then make sure you have a speaker hooked up. I'm using this cab right here. Make sure the impedance matches, of course. And then it needs to be in high power mode. Plugged in. You don't have to have a guitar plugged in, but have it in high power mode. And then we'll turn it on. And we put it in standby. And then you wait. And there's our voltage. We're at negative 30.8, negative 30.29. Negative 29, dropping a little bit. And these are a matched pair of tubes. Uh, and I paid the dollar to have them burned in already. So that's a nice thing too. Now this is a kind of a glue mixing stick that I put a point on to get me down into that test pot, not test pot, adjustment pot. And so that I don't electrocute myself or do something stupid, but at 29 and then you got to let these tubes warm up nicely and give it a few minutes. Um, 29.95 is pretty good. I'd be happy leaving it right there on the cooler side. 29.98, 29.97, we're right in there. This is so touchy that if I touched it, I might not get it that close again to negative 30 and it seems to be pretty happy right there i would probably never get it that close if i fool with the little test pot all right so it's been a couple minutes it seems to be real stable right there at negative 30 on the nose so I'm pretty happy with that. We'll wrap it back up. Cool. Seems to be happy. Shut her down. Take it out of standby. And turn it off. I hear the speaker pop a little bit. And now our caps are draining. Voltages are draining out of the circuit. Unplug it. Have the time of your life. Just don't do anything stupid. Cool. So I let it sit while I went and had some lunch. There are some, uh, while these things are turned on, there certainly are some high voltages, but once they're disconnected, turned off, you really just have capacitor voltage to worry about. While it can give you a shock, um, you know, it's still nothing to mess with. Don't be foolish. But we used to throw capacitors around the electronics lab charge them up and then toss them to your buddy that was kind of a joke nothing to hurt anybody but um, once it's unplugged give it some time to sit and then just be careful where you put your fingers but it's only when it's plugged in that you really have high voltages to worry about Right. Another thing, um, my JJ's were just a little taller than the Rubies, and I had to finagle them a little bit to get them past the uh, outline of the box. Otherwise, it went just like you'd expect. <laughs> Threads, the gear, gear page threads on this little amp, the Ibanez, is, uh, can take you down some wild roads. Um, whether or not it's fixed bias or, uh, you know, fixed bias or cathode biased or variable biased, whether it can take 6V6, uh, 6L6 tubes, um, not a lot of, nobody seems to know exactly. But 
it has test points and it has a variable pot, an adjustment pot, and a voltage of negative 30 volts DC, which is not millivolts, it's pretty high. 30 volts is what you look in there on those um, tubes. Now, whether or not you can put six L6 tubes in there, I've heard of people switching, but they have different bias voltages, and sometimes the circuit needs to be configured differently. I don't know that much about it, but happy with uh, knowing that those tubes are good. I'm going to keep this and it's a very nice clean alternative to a fender amp. Nice and spanky. Like it. All right. Happy teching, everybody. Be safe. Don't just <laughs> have the time of your life. Just don't do anything stupid. Old guy jamming it out. Sub, like, share. <laughs>